Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Rod Mejia. I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. This week I have six new reviews for your folks at home, including a couple from our correspondent, Ian Mitchell. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody. This was actually recorded on Christmas Day after a very um, coma-induced <laughs> Christmas uh, dinner nap. Um but I want to make sure I got the podcast out for you folks with some nice reviews for you, including some uh, that are Russian translations. We have Alpha Zero, uh, a new series from Arthur Stone. We also have a new story called uh, Apocalypse Generic System, uh, which a lot of people have found. Uh, also, Fortune Favors the Cobalt, a short story from Robert Bevan of the Caverns and Creatures uh, series. Also, a web novel, um, well, Manga, I guess in this case, uh, reincarnated as a soul, as a sword. Uh, and also we have a couple of reviews from our correspondent, Ian Mitchell, which is going to include the Sixth Realm Part 2 and also Pilgrim Part 2. So great reviews for you folks coming in today. Uh, before we get into any of that, though, of course, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. <laughs> And fucking rare and in lit RPG news, we only have a couple stories here. Uh, first off, we'll start off with a nice lit RPG deal from the uh, wonderful author C.M. Carney for his Quincet, Quintessence uh, novel, which is the first book in a series that he plans to put out called Crucible. Uh, it's out for 99 cents until 1229, until uh, just about the end of the month, uh, which is it's a wonderful novel. And I have to remember if you uh, get the book as an ebook, you can also get the audiobook, uh, which I think is narrated by Nick Podell, which is out now for you to enjoy um, at a discount usually. So definitely go check that out if you're looking for us to save some money. And this is, you know, um, Sam Carney was nice enough to tell his readers about this. So I don't feel uncomfortable saying that. Uh, in other little bit of news, we have the end of a nice charitable run for the Gamelet Society on Facebook. Uh, the final total for that charitable contribution to Shriners Hospital ended up being $3,468 even. So, um, Blaze Corbin, who organizes that event every year, uh, was nice enough to post the receipt for that. So everybody knows all the money from the, uh, from the, from the fundraising campaign went, here's the receipt. And of course he was, uh, made in the name of Paul Campbell Jr., who is an author, a little bit author, uh, who passed away this year. So, uh, there we go. So thank you everybody for, for donating and, and helping, helping the children. It was, it was for the children. Okay, in other news, we have, uh, well, that's the new section, actually, on two stuff that is out now. Haven't had a chance to read it, but it's out for you to enjoy, including High Gloom, the sixth book in the Mad Guy series uh, by the amazing Eric Ugland. Also, the last book in the Axe Druid series by Christopher Johns is out, book number six in that series called Into the Wild. Uh, also, it is the second book in the Bone Knight series. Uh, the author of, uh, next gen gamer, uh, was nice enough to let us know that we'd missed his novel. Uh, so I'll make sure to wrap it into this, uh, particular episode of the podcast legacy systems. This came actually out, uh, last week. Um, also out is conditions evolutions book number three. So I'm glad that that one's getting a third book in the series. It was a uh, redone, picked up by another producer or, um, at least for the cover arts. And so I enjoyed the original quirky <laughs> version of it, but I'm happy to see that the author has, has found an audience and it's continuing on, um, in new audiobooks, we have condition evolution, the audiobook. uh, <laughs> The cover art is an investment, um, and now it is an audiobook, so there you go. The seventh book in the Dragonheart series is out as an audiobook. Path to Villainy came out as an audiobook. Uh, Morgan uh, Cole's Inheritance, um, which is a uh, very entertaining um, sci-fi-ish, crafting space sci-fi kind of uh, story, is out for you to enjoy. Also, as I mentioned previously, CM Carney's Quintessence audiobook came out, and I was right, it is narrated by Nick Podell, so go enjoy the audiobook goodness. Um, in upcoming Little BG, we have stuff that's coming out December, rest of this month, December, January, February, that's as far as I go in the future for looking for stuff. Um, and December 28th is going to be Small Unit Tactics Volume 2. Um, this one is a change in release schedule, it actually was originally scheduled for, I think, a February 28th release, uh, author pushed up ready to go now out on December 29th wasteland real RPG works here series uh, December 30th primacy online book number five January the 4th underdog book number five January the 5th is gonna be myth ruin online book number two Fay Nexus book number one is gonna be out on uh, January the 5th 
um, interest online is going to be out on January the 5th, which is a new entry to, uh, to the list. Uh, Carl's Doomsday Scenario, the amazing Matt Dinamons written of a RPG Apocalypse story, is out on January the 6th, 2021. On uh, January 8th, the second book in the Legacy Systems Desert Trials. On January the 12th, it'll be the second book in the Warlock Chronicles, the Reborn Evolution series. Uh, on January, January the 12th, a new series called Activation, uh, a nanomachine world, a ma- nanomachine magical world literary adventure. Uh, Carl Stavill's second book in his uh, superhero literary story called Henchman, actually the third book rather, is out on January the 15th. Uh, Couch Potato Crisis book number two will be out on January the 15th as well. January the 18th, it'll be Rogue Merchant number, book number three. January the 19th, The Heavenly Throne book number four. January the 19th, Life in Exile book number four. January the 20th, it'll be the fourth book in the Player Reaches the Top series. January 26th, Underpowered Howard. January the 26th, The Battlegrounds Online. January the 30th, The Arkemi Online Chronicles book number five. January the 31st, Legends Online, book number 8. February the 2nd, The Adventures of Nan, book number 2. February the 4th, is going to be the Good Guys series, book number 10. February the 5th, it'll be a real lit RPG Roman series uh, by Angelus Maximus. A second book in that series. February the 8th, it'll be the third book in the Factory of God series. February the 16th, Rule of Cool. On February the 6th, 17th, Beta Testers, book number 5. February the 17th, the 6th book in the Discardium series. And February 23rd, last on the list, is Jeff the Game Master. So, all kinds of little bit goodness coming to you in the near future. On to the, the reviews for this week. And first up for the week is uh, Alpha Zero, a new series from Arthur Stone. Um, it is 625 pages, $5.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. I should not exist. All children like me are stillborn or die in infancy. Those who cannot grow stronger die. No empty child has ever reached a year of age, and yet I am now 13. It has been a long and miserable 13 years, or the best I can manage to do is walk with difficulty. Sometimes I cannot even manage that. My clan is paid dearly for every minute of my life, and money is not so easy to obtain here on the edge of civilization. Perhaps I might have lived in this state for many years, a cripple, strong in mind, but feeble in money. But when some unexpected guests come to our state, everything changed. I would die at last, or I would learn to survive on my own. Okay. Um, this The philosophy of the story and the mechanics reminded me of a series for, uh, called Underdog in which the main character seems to be broken because he has a zero level and is unable to survive in a world where levels mean everything. Um, that flaw turns into the character's secret boon as he discovers a way to exploit the system for unheard of rewards, um, which is the same kind of fundamental premise. Now, the actual stories as they develop are very different. Um, this one definitely has more of a cultivation start. Um, and the main character in the story definitely does his own thing, has his own way to progress, his own exploit. So they're not copying each other in any way other than the fundamental premise of broken character makes good, uh, kind of thing. Um, there's a lot of hard work with the main character here, creative thinking. Uh, and in this case, uh, fishing, which is, I'm like, why is he holding two knives? If it would be more <laughs> appropriate from holding a fishing pole. Um, but that is less engaging, I suppose. Um, but it's still like they're very much like game mechanic exploitation story. Um, this is an interesting story. Uh, the beginning was a little confusing and a little, um, lacking in game mechanics. It, it, it very much is more about setting up the main character's emotional background, his, his the, a little bit of world building, which is nicely done. Um, but it is, it's, it's seriously confused as to where the main character comes from. Cause it, uh, this is minorly spoiler, I suppose, but it doesn't really matter too much to the main, to the character version of the story. Um, the main character is in the body of this person who has a zero level. So he's essentially crippled in this world where, what, where stats and characteristic points actually have an, uh, an actual impact on the world and the way a person behaves and is able to, to function. Um, but there's also a, a, a reincarnation thing going on here. The main character is supposed to be from our world. Um, he was 
I guess, summoned to this world as a part of the mother's way of like trying to fix her son, but, and she murders him. Uh, but instead of him dying, he's then put into the body of the son and he takes over his consciousness. And so he's been there for 12 of the character of the, of the beings, 13 years. Um, but he's been hiding himself for no real reason. I mean, in my opinion, um, be, uh, and that, like I said, that section is a little confusing, but ultimately just ends up being the main character's broken. The, he, he hates the mother because he was murdered by her, I guess. And so there's this whole hating mother theme, but that doesn't really last long. It's more, really just more about the main character trying to find a way to survive in this world. Um, so that portion of the background doesn't really matter, but it was super confusing in the beginning um, of an otherwise like well-told, you know, little world building story. Um, and I said, there very much is like this cultivation of feel um, with like cultivation core, bringing in, you know, call it an energy and building your, your, they don't call them levels, they call them, I think, circles in the story. But it's basically the same fundamental concept of you're bringing in some resource to build yourself up, make yourself more powerful, uh, develop um, a class system and skill system in the story to, to where that has a real physical impact on what you can do in this world. Um, but that doesn't come out until about the 14% mark. So at the first 14% is a little, like I said, a little little bit to get through sometimes. Uh, but overall, it's, it's entertaining, just light confusing. And other reviews have also mentioned this, so I'm just letting you know. Uh, but once the RPD stuff happens, I was I was I was absolutely on board with the story. Very entertaining. I've always enjoyed Arthur Stone's work, um, so I was definitely willing to push through it a little bit. Where it's confusing to enjoy the story, and it, it's it definitely is a good story. The RPG aspects include stats levels, um, cultivation cores, again circles of of of, of progression. Um, I think it's more of a it, it it very much is a unique system where the unique rules and how the stats can develop according to the system um, based upon the rewards for doing extraordinary things. It's not just kill a monster, get experience points, um, which is which is fundamentally the way the main character can exploit his zero system because anything divided by zero is infinite. Um, and in this case, that, that means for the main character, he gets these big bonuses for doing well, just about anything, at least once, at least in the beginning, with um, diminishing results as he's repeating them. And so it's it's up to him to figure this out and to see how he can exploit it and what things he can do. And that's very much um, how the story goes. So it's very, the game mechanics are very relevant to this world, which I really always enjoy, whether an intricate part of how the world building is, is also described, because the, that definitely has an effect on the stratification like power in this world as well so interesting stuff um overall it's a it's an interesting story again where you see, you see the main character make great strides in his progression um and if that's just if you like the underdog series you're probably gonna like this one as well for the same kind of reasons um and again if you need a story though with a lot of fighting and action scenes i don't think this is gonna satisfy you too much because the there is tension, there is, uh, there's opposition, there's conflict, but it's not necessarily of the, I'm going to murder in huge epic battles, at least not yet. There's definitely a lot of uh, good action uh, towards the end of the story. The beginning and middle is very much about survival uh, and figuring out a place to, um, I don't want to spoil things, uh, make a place in this world and this, in the area, the main character ends up in and finding a way to 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 live and exploit the world, exploit the mechanics, and his his unique little quirky um, situation. Uh, but there's crafting, there's other kinds of conflict, and I enjoyed it. But again, it wasn't from an action point of view necessarily. Uh, but it was still very noble for me as a, as a literature reader. Uh, for me, it gets score seven point seven out of ten. That's Alpha Zero, Alpha Lit RPG book number one with a score of seven point seven. I really liked it out of ten. And next up, we have Apocalypse Generic System, written by Macronomicon. It is 379 pages, $4.99. It's available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. Jeb Trapper tried to kill himself. The gun jammed. Two months later, the vet is participating in underground trials of ecstasy to treat his PTSD. Everything seemed to be going great until... The system has been installed. Now he's got to choose the difficulty of tutorial. Just one problem. He's high as a kite and nothing seems impossible. Not a bad, actually, uh, hook for the novel description. It's a uh, main character ends up choosing that particular option for the tutorial, the impossible option, and it leads to some very challenging situations in the RPG apocalypse. Uh, game mechanic side of things, it is 
fairly good. Um, the unique classes for just about all the characters, Mystic Tactimony, Trapsmith. I don't want to spell things by naming too many others. Um, but that is kind of the unique situation for the for this for the show as far as game mechanics go. Um, early on, their stats and levels, all that good stuff does exist throughout the story, but it means more early and mid story after the main character hits level twenty, where he actually gets his class um, a selection option and a specialization. After that point, that RPG stuff seems to matter less to the story as far as. Um, gaining experience points, you know, distributing stats, that kind of stuff. They still exist for the rest of the story, um, petered in, but the story focuses more on, on what the main character is doing with his class powers that he chooses, how he's using them intelligently to to make strides into the RPG Apocalypse tutorials um, system where it's just great tasks to do um, and being clever and being and gathering allies and such. Um, it's It's... So it becomes less about gaining experience points and level, and like the, the levels after that point really don't seem to matter as I much. Mean, most I, I mean that pers- from the perspective of the main character doesn't seem to have any hard limits in the story. There are no numbers of like, oh, he this getting to this point of like thirty experience point or thirty points in this ability means he he has this much mana or this much stamina as a number, which is a limiting factor. And those don't exist. There are numbers for ability uh, for for stats and attributes and levels, um, but there are hard no hard numbers for anything like mana or or hit points or stamina. Um, and that's very intentional in their writing um, so that basically out there doesn't have to do math or he might be doing in the background uh, but it's not something that comes through because it, it would be a limiting factor in what the main character can do um and that's just a writing decision uh, as, as far as like what a writer wants to do for, but for me it was very evident after the main character is level 20 that oh those limiting factors don't really exist and i don't necessarily hate that it, it, on one level it's annoying because i can see I can, I can see that as the main character does stuff um on the other level it's like oh it's just makes it's still a fun story and the main character does clever things um and and i understand the decision on that basis but it, it, it made it a little bit less entertaining for me but not not a lot even even i was like oh this is just written as a fun story using game mechanics and, and being clever and using these interesting systems the, main, the author does use follow the rules for the that he does establish and that's always the important thing if you're going to establish your rules you follow them um so and then the author definitely does that in a good way um so the story after that point again while the game mechanic side of things um does fade in the background a little bit uh, as far as like the tech the technical like importance of blowing up um it's still there and the, it, it mixes well in with the impossible stature of uh of, of this particular tutorial uh, the, as the strict continues on there were appropriate twists that i didn't see coming that were interesting and the author cranks up all the epic goodness for good twists uh that keeps you turning page after page after page uh, so for me this is a, a, an almost great story um just to get again a couple points mostly based on the rpg stuff that stop it from being so um also just a little bit of the op story tongue that ends up towards the other story um for me really really good story 7.8 out of 10 apocalypse generic system we're getting with a really good score of 7.8 out of 10 and next up we have a short story from robert bevan fortune favors the cool ball 39 page short story 299 also available on Kindle Unlimited. That's the way you should read it. Um, here's the author's description. Tim and the CNC gang get more than they bargained for when they follow a lead given to Mike Friendly Cobalt. Will they find the hidden treasure? Will Tim find his pants? Will any horse survive? Find out on this exciting addition to the Caverns and Creatures collection. Okay, this is a decent story from Robert Bevan as a short story. Um, he puts these on a regular basis. And they're all... I yet to read one that I didn't enjoy um but they're definitely varying levels of enjoy it's kind of depending on who's the character main character it's telling the <laughs> from that perspective um i my favorite character in, in for the main group are definitely going to be cooper uh julian um dave and then tim tim is like my least favorite character most because he's just a drunk jerk um and it's it's but he's not like a super interesting drunk jerk he's just like a, a kind of a mean drunk jerk and he's annoying sometimes and it's in his description which means the other writes him well um if he has that emotional impact i suppose uh but because of that point of view this the story isn't 
isn't my favorite, unfortunately. Um, it's still entertaining. There's some nice little quirky things that happen here. But I've always really enjoyed either Julian's character's point of view or I think Cooper's my favorite. He's just like the most fun character, I think. Um, uh, and But it's still entertaining. So I've told from a drunken Tim's POV um, and you get oddities and blackouts and it's an entertaining quick story um it didn't have any of like the usual like weird super odd twist everything was very much of like lines of okay he's going here there are little hints of what's going to come and they come true there's no like we're odd twist twists i i think of um but it's a nice little quick little fun story um so if you like the characters like the series this is a nice little addition it's on Kindle Limited. It's a nice little, you know, I think half hour, 45 minute read. Um, you know, nice little tidbit of a story. So 7.3 out of 10, um, which is a little bit under average good, I suppose. Uh, but it's still an entertaining story. Uh, so that's Fortune and Favors of the Cobalt. Uh, 7.3 out of 10. And next up we have, I was a sword when I reincarnated or... Uh, as it's translated into English, reincarnated as a sword. Uh, so there are a couple of versions of this out on the internet, uh, but it is officially licensed. So we'll be talking about those versions uh, because that is fair. <laughs> uh, here it is. It's uh, 41 plus chapters, um, including stuff that's being translated online. It's $9.99. It's a light novel. $12.99 is a manga. I think it's $9.99 uh, if you get it through Comic Con. Uh, Ecology, or through Amazon's ebook version of the comic. Um, it's an eight volume light novel, and there's an equal number of uh, on the manga version, but it's not all officially translated, which is where this gets quirky. Um, and there is an English publisher, so just be aware of that. Um, here is the novel description, or the manga description. When he realized it, the protagonist was in another world and had become a sword that was stabbed on an altar in a great plain, crowded with devil beasts. The world he was in had a game-like system, HP, MP, strength, vitality, agility, intelligence, dexterity, titles, and equipment. Following his instinct as a living sword, he traveled to find the one who could be his wielder, until he met with a cat girl that was about to be attacked by a bear-type devil beast. So there you go. That's, that's definitely the, the, the beginning of the story. Um... This is a lighter slice of life story with a main character who is reincarnated as a sword in a fantasy world. He's OP as heck, um, and he gets stuck somewhere and eventually picked up by a young cat girl slave who he saves and frees. And they two go on adventures, exploring the world and leveling up. It's a simple setup. It's a simple premise of the story. It's light. It's fun. It's funny. Uh, this isn't a particularly heavy or complex story. It's a very slice of life where they just kind of go and do things. And yet I, I actually enjoyed it. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll show you off some of the... Um, versions of the artwork. Um, this is through Amazon. Uh, so again, there is an official um, manga version that has been licensed. It the on uh, the the official licensed version doesn't go all the way up through the most recent versions uh, of, of the series. Um, it only goes up to a certain point. I think it's like five or six. Um, the light novel version I think goes all the way up to eight. Um, but if you love the manga version and you want to continue out, there are fan translated versions that float on the internet. But because it is translated, uh, has an official English translator and licensor, we're only going to show you links for for the official stuff because that's fair to make sure authors get the get get their money because they worked hard on this. Um, and even though I, I read the entire manga version online, I didn't um, to support the authors by the officially licensed version, as you should, if you like stuff from from authors and from creators. And here's the here's the actual work. Um, again, it's a black and white manga. Like I said, very nice line work, very clean stuff, um, uh, very nice perspectives, and an entertaining story. Like I said, it's good artwork that adds to the story. I'm generally in favor of of mangas or web novel web comics um, being translated versus the light novel versions is just that the light novel aren't always translated well. Um, so I, I, the universality of, of, you know, images seems to, to work better for me as far as uh, enjoying a story. Uh, but you can see that there's very, very good artwork here and it's very entertaining. It's very easy to read fun story, light. Um, if, <laughs> if you're willing to pay that price tag. Um, and I ended up liking the series as a whole enough to pay you know, the 12 bucks, uh, for, for this version on online as, as, as you should, when you enjoy a thing and that somebody has to work for, they need to get paid for it. Um, 
to me at least, as, as somebody who's kind of in the field, um, I, I feel like it's only fair. So there, you go. so all kinds of fun stuff there. Um, and so, so I had a good time with it. Um, again, I, I, I know we're going to say like, don't explore these things, but if they're thing officially licensed stuff, go pay for it. it it's only seems only fair if you enjoy it, if you enjoyed it. Um, but that's your choice. I'm never going to tell you what to do. That's just what I did. Um, for me, give it a score of 7.6 out of 10. Um, I was a sword when we incarnate, or actually reincarnate as a sword. Um, it's available for you to enjoy. It's 7.6 out of 10, which is a slightly above average, you know, good score for me. So, you know, it's it's good. Not not great, but it's good. It's entertaining, light, and I definitely don't uh, regret spending my time with these characters in this series. It's just kind of a fun, light story. And next up, we have Ayn's Picks of the Week. Um, this is a section of our show where contributor Ayn Mitchell, a longtime lit RPG community member who reads and reviews as much as I do, was nice enough to, to agree to send us some of his reviews for us to read to you folks. And he's like, he reads other things that I don't. Um, and it's a nice way to expand the podcast and to share things that I, I might not have gotten a chance to read because there's so much stuff that comes out on a weekly basis or just stuff that he he enjoys that maybe isn't sort of going to pique my interest. Uh, but it's all Liturgy. So here we go. We have Sixth Realm Part 2 for the week, for the first review from this week. Uh, the Thames Realms book number seven. So this is going to be confusing because this is part two. It's still the sixth realm, but it's the seventh book. I know. Uh, here we go. Um, Ian says, on to the seventh realm. I really like Michael Chatfield's book. I really want more action in this one. Uh, the writing is good and I like the story so far, but I like cultivation. This one is slow, bouncing around again with visiting lots of interesting people and showing off cool weapon systems. I can't say it was fun. Some hints late that interesting things await in the next realm mostly all of the development with some eric and regret cultivating i was thinking where's the explosion on body count through much of the first 40 percent of the book 7.5 out of 10 um so there you go and so 7.5 is is still a good review score for mine however translates to my terms we're usually about a point apart uh on average in what that would mean so for me that would almost be like a six out of six out of ten i'm like oh this might not work for me especially with a slower 40 percent part i haven't read it though so that's that's not an official review score i still end up enjoying it he gave it a 7.5 out of 10 but for, for those folks who uh are usually on the podcast that's generally what it translates out to uh for, for comparing his review scores to mine um so he this is not i don't think his favorite but he still had a good time with it he gave it a score of again a 7.5 out of 10 which is a good review score from him still Okay, on to the next review is going to be Pilgrim book number two from Harmon Cooper. And Ian says this is about this one. He says, it's hard to quit when you're an assassin. Too many assassins after you. I really enjoy the interactions between Danzen, Kudzu, and Jelmei. Uh, reading this was smooth, almost like a dream. I didn't feel a lot of dramatic tension, even when things difficult things were going on, perhaps too smooth. A lot of story packed in. The fights were intense and short. A lot of fun to read. I got worried towards the end as there didn't seem to be enough book left to finish, but it was well done. Great stories and series. I think I liked book one more. This, this one was more almost awesome. I'm not sure what that last sentence means. Um, <laughs> sorry. He gives it a score, though, of 8.8 .8 out of 10. Um, so, like I said, the, that review score is generally... Uh, this is a great review for, for, for Pilgrim 2 from Ian. So he, he he really, really did enjoy this one. He, again, said he thought it was almost awesome, I think. <laughs> so there you go. That's Ian's Picks of the Week. And that is it for the show. Thanks to everyone for listening, for watching, hanging out with me this week. Uh, it's Christmas here. Um, still for officially for a cup of house, So jingle bells, I guess. I'm not sure how, how this works for you folks. Um, but thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out. Maybe you can contact the podcast if you want to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, UG, Patreon, our website. We have a, a, over, a, um, over, over a thousand reviews um, that we've done for the, for, for the genre. 
um, so you can see our favorites, our top 10. We have a recommendation list for you in case you're looking for, for other things or things to read during the holiday season. Um, we also have ways that you can support the podcast, help us stay free, help us stay ad free. Um, if you enjoy the show, you can find all the ways to support us at litrpgpodcast.com slash support. Um, but again, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I hope you guys have a good holiday. I hope you guys have safe and it's healthy and it's it's i know it's quirky this year because of the way it is but i hope you guys stay safe um and again thanks for answering until we can hang out again remember to go read some lit rpg goodbye everybody